Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling with Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, this little guy right here in Amongst the Light Show. And uh, in this bubbling, we're going to continue to look at new things in Zim 10.8.0. Uh, we did have a previous bubbling where we looked at the new selector, wrapper, and uh, the resizable window. Would you like just a quick uh, review of those? That's in Zim 10. So let's see, we'll click on Zim 10 and hit the wrapper. So here is the wrapper. As you change the size here, that wraps like that. Then we also had the uh, selector, selector, like that. And you can go from one place to the other with the selector on a grid. Indeed, back here, this is also a selector, which is selecting columns now. And then we had the window, window, like that, which has its new resize at the bottom right-hand side there to allow you to resize the window. So I already took a look at those. What we want to look at now is back in the docs. And we'll click on top there. Back in the docs, we have updates right at the top of the docs, updates. There's the wrapper. Here's the selector. And here's the window improvements. But now we want to take a look at what we've been doing with Animate. So Animate has a bunch of changes to it and a bunch of updates that are quite exciting. So back in here, whoop, bigger. Here is an example of Animate, and this is up in the Zim code pen. If you take a look, each of those uh, are, each time it loops, they're going to a different location. So if you take a look closely in here, those are different locations. So what we're able to do now is change the properties that we're animating to for every loop. Uh, indeed, we've been wanting to do that for a long time. But the uh, that system is in the CreateJS animation. So CreateJS had no way to change. Say we're animating to a scale of 2 one time. And then when it loops, I want to animate to a scale of 3. Well, there, even though we have the ZIMV values or ZIM pick, we weren't able to do that because CreateJS in behind, which is what we're animating with, uh, didn't allow for that with the loop. So we've made a minor adjustment, a one-line adjustment to CreateJS. We're launching that as, if you note here under the JS, 1.2.4 CreateJS. So this is on the Zim CDN. 1.2.4. If you're using the older ones, or indeed CreateJS from CreateJS, you won't have the ability to change uh, properties, change values of properties as you're looping. Okay, so let's close that and see what we how we did that down in here. We've made a bunch of circles, or there's a container of a bunch of circles. We're putting in uh, the various circles using Zim pick values. See how handy those are? We could just say every time you make a circle, it's going to be 0 to 100. If you wanted to put a min in there, you could as well. And there's pick from these colors. Go ahead and center on the circles. So um, another thing you'll notice is you see that how that's going. If we switch to a tab like this and then come back again, that animation was paused. So we'll switch to a tab and come back again. The animation is paused, and that um, allows it to all stay in sync. So that's something new. In Zim 10.8.0, we're pausing the animation when the window loses its, its focus. Uh, so if you minify it or go to another tab, etc. You can actually open up another browser window nearby, and as long as you're seeing this, it will still animate. But when it's hidden, uh, the animate all runs with the request animation frame, which has a feature where it slows down when it's hidden. And in that slowing down process, uh, animations can go out of sync. So uh, we've taken the cue from Greensock there. Uh, GSAP has um, uh, shown a way to do that, and so we followed that route. So thank you for those guys. 
Um, we're also doing a comparison here. They were able to do that, and that's why I was sort of like, okay, uh, we finally have to, you know, really do this. Uh, like I said, we've been wanting to do it ever since we developed PIC on the on the Zim side. PIC, which allows us for the Zim V values there. We've been noticing that animations could be much more powerful if we could, on rewind and uh, loop and stuff, um, pick different values uh, for the next rewind. Uh, with pick, we can pass in a function. We can do things like make something constantly speed up or speed up and then slow down. So imagine that uh, it loops and then it animates at uh, five seconds. Then the next time it, it, it loops again and it animates it to four seconds and loop at two seconds, three seconds, two, one second, and then it goes back the other way. So we can make animations kind of sort of speed up and slow down by passing in a ZimV function at the time, or, or randomly, or in a series. So that one, I guess, could just be a series of, of times. So here we are animating, and what we're doing is we're animating to a Y position of a minimum of zero and a max of stage height. So there again is the ZimV value, or the pick that's being passed in for both X and Y of each circle. We're, we're animating each circle individually because we've got a sequence of zero. So we could animate them each individually in a sequence and start like with uh, 10 milliseconds between and they would go pop, 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 pop. There's 400 of them, so that would kind of take a long time to work its way through the sequence. Um, but by setting the sequence to zero, that means we're applying a unique animation to each one, and that's why this gets applied to each individual circle. But normally when we loop, we wouldn't see a difference. So if we comment the loop pick out here, this is how we set that up. So loop pick will pick from this each time it loops. Otherwise it won't, because sometimes you, you want it and sometimes you don't. So if we run this again now that we've commented out the loop pick, you'll see that this will always be the same. There's a little purple circle right here. You see, always the same little purple circle. There's a little blue one, or a blue one right here. Blue one, blue one. Uh, there's a little green one coming right to the edge. Little green one coming right to the edge. So those are always the same. But if we say, go ahead and pick a different value again from here. So uh, loop pick true. We save this and run it. Now we get a big cir purple circle right there. No big purple circle. No big purple circle. Let's try again. We get a yellow one right here. No yellow one right here. So those are, are now different. All right. So that's um, basically how we're doing that with a loop pick. And also the time is being selected. Now let's see what's going on with the time. Yeah, Each time we loop, it's picking a different time for each of these elements. So that's why you get this sort of effect where some seem to come in slightly later than the other. There's only a difference of 200 milliseconds there, but uh, you can kind of see it, and it gives it this sort of neat parallax effect as it does it. Okay, so uh, those are two things then in Animate. One is the loop pick, and the other is the fact that we're pausing it as, it, um, as the window gets smaller. The other thing that we need to do is be able to do that with the interval as well. So uh, right in here somewhere, I think we've got, let's open that up. We've got a pause animate of false going on here in this interval. So here's an interval. We're taking this long to do our interval, and we're running this function every time we interval. And the uh, this is the function right there. This is the third parameter of interval, which is something like either start immediate or how many. And this is either start immediate or how many. This true means pause the interval. Do not run the interval when the window has lost focus. So by default, we allow the interval to carry on when the window loses focus. And here we have to setting that to true. So we'll run with this for a little while. This is all news to Zim 10.8. We'll see how it goes. So by default, the animation pauses when we reduce the window, but the interval keeps going. It may be that we also want to pause the interval as the animation keeps going. You know, we'll, we'll see. But I think that um, uh, at the moment, you have to turn that on. Alrighty, so uh, that's one thing. I'm ignoring the phone, perhaps it'll go away. 
Uh, is that is that a viewer calling in here now? Oh, we just did a desktop reveal. Desktop reveal. Where do I want to go to now? I'm going to take a look at this stuff. Okay, so we're coming back now to some code, and we'd like to show you what's new with Zog. Did you think there could ever be anything new with Zog? So as you recall, um, Zog says, uh, hello, gentle users. Are you gentle? Hello, not gentle. Well, I suppose gentle's better. Excited users. Yes, there we go. That sounds more exciting. Hello, excited users. And we will now zog that. So we save that up and we open in a browser. Open in browser. Here comes our browser. And if we F11 that, oh, not F11, F12. Reduce this down here. Hello, excited users. It zogs right in the browser uh, there. Now watch what zog with two G's does. You ready? Save that up and view it in the browser. Refresh. Ooh, we get this Z in a little rectangle here that's in the color green. Do you get it? How about rrr, zog er? Refresh here, and now we get a red one. So there's a bunch of them. Let's get them. There's red, <clears throat> yellow, green, blue, orange, and pink. One, two, three, four, five, six of them, I think. Yeah. Okay, so uh, these can zog anything. You can zog a number, 22, an array of things. One, two, three, four, five. You can zog the stage, so an object. You can zog nothing. So there's nothing, and here would be a goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, excited users spelled properly. And we come back here and we refresh. And there's our hello. Here's our number. There's our array and our stage object is in blue and there's uh, nothing so there's a zog of nothing and a goodbye excited users as well so this would allow you to color code various messages if you want or just make sure that you see a certain message at a certain time and that works in chrome as well on the, the dark mode of chrome uh, etc all right so that is an update in zog Let's go back to uh, the docs here somewhere. Docs. And back to the uh, updates of the, zog, the, the Zogs, the docs. So, improvement, the selector, window, animate, anything else in animate. So this goes through and talks about the pics and stuff. Uh, we added the dot animation to the docs. Okay, yeah. So remember that an, uh, things can animate. For instance, here's here we are in 3JS. So we're animating a new 3JS mesh, etc. And we're animating the uh, rotation of that. So to put a dot animation in play, you see how it's got the dot Y? We're animating the Y property on the rotation object of this 3JS mesh. So you put that in quotes. And then that's in radians too. So don't forget, we now have a times rad or times deg, D-E-G, all capitals, to convert from degrees to radians or vice versa. Bitmaps. Bitmaps, you, if you blit, blit means that you're going to take a, a vector drawing and save it out as, a, as an image, so as a bitmap. And you keep on making new vector drawings, like new lines or whatever, and then you sort of overwrite the bitmap. You keep on like adding them to the to the bitmap with a blend mode or something like that. Anyway, um, usually you would have to cache the the vector object. So here's a whole bunch of circles, for instance, we're caching, and then we're we ask for the cache canvas of that and pass that into the bitmap. That's a bit annoying to have to remember how to do that. 
So we've now done that automatically. If you just pass circles, this would be your container filled with a bunch of vector circles. If you pass that into bitmap, it will just do this for us and uh, make a, a new bitmap out of, out of that. So that makes it a little bit easier. Colors, we've talked about light and darken on the last one. And so here's some general ones. Hmm, we've added a percent close parameter to the circle. When you, when you put a, um, when you put a circle, I see this isn't yellow, it should be in yellow. When you put a circle at a percent, it will draw half the circle, but if you have a border on that, then it will fill in the rest of that border, like it fills the half percent border, if you want to see it. So if we make a new circle, new circle, and we say um, percent uh, 50, do better put a border color on that border color colon white like that and border width colon four okay so that that will be a black circle and we'll center that on the stage so there you have a black circle centered on the stage open in a browser hmm. it's not a black circle right if you specify the border color then it um, it assumes, and you haven't specified the color, then it assumes that you don't want a color. So we'll make a color of red. And come on back here. There we go. Um, so you see how it draws the line in at the bottom there? It may be that you don't want that. So you can say percent closed, I think, is false, like that, or is it just percent close? I'm not sure, I can't remember now. And it looks like it's just percent close. That would warn you in the console that percent closed is a bad parameter. Let me refresh here, there we are. So now you don't have to finish your border if you don't want to. As a matter of fact, if we didn't have a color there of red, that gets you a semicircle arc, which is Primarily, I suppose, what we would want to use this for. There's an arc without the closing arc. And by the way, that arc can change as well. You can make it 80%. And you've got that. Uh, mind you, anytime you want, you can always draw arcs with the inside of a shape. So you can make a new shape. And by the way, the shape a little while back, I don't think we ever talked about that on in a in a bubbling. Uh, the shape has been adjusted as well. Let's go to the updates, uh, or actually the docs. So this was the docs on animates. We were looking through the general updates now. Of, uh, this is, we're in a bubbling. Uh, I can take us back to the docs here. Or, oops, that's zoom. The docs and look up shape. So there were some additions to shape. Normally you have a shape graphics. So here would be an example, a new shape. Oh, so we can do this now just as new shape, fill, and draw a rectangle and add to. Note that these are now chainable, the little, the little short ones to fill and draw a rectangle and strokes and all the little tiny APIs it's called. It's a tiny API that CreateJS made up. Uh, maybe somebody else did, but CreateJS uses it. Well, they would always do it on the graphics. So we would have to say shape.graphics and then graphics.begin stroke or graphics. Well, this would be S. I can't edit this. Um, S and SS. Uh, move to would be MT, etc. So uh, previously, we would always have to do that on the graphics property. Now we've moved all of the tiny API right onto the shape itself, which means we can continue to chain, to add it, etc., or drag, or whatever we want to do. All right, so um, that's been updated on the shape. So you can always use shapes to make, uh, make angles, or uh, what are they called? Arcs. Okay, that was just be an A for arc. All right, going back to the updates then. Change the Zim game module score to say score for its type. Yeah, okay. Zim object should return the class of physics. Uh, we added, oh, we added on the physics, this might be of interest to you, on the physics, the borders used to not, be, the borders of physics are outside the, usually outside the, um, the window, so we don't need to see them. Therefore, we didn't even add a Zim object to the borders in physics. 
But then when you contact things, contact tells you the Zim object and the physics object when you receive the callback function. Well, if the border didn't have a Zim object, then it would give us an error if we tried to ask, you know, ask for that. Well, it would be null, and sometimes you want to find out what type of object you've hit, like what's the type of circle. Well, if null was returned, null doesn't have a type, so it would give you a red error and break your app. So what we've done is we still don't really have a Zim object there, but what we did do is we we just set it as an empty object that has a type property of border right here. So it has a type of border. It's also got a side of left, right, top, bottom. So if you find out the type is a border, you can also ask if its size is left, right, top, bottom. And remember, those can be accessed with capital left, L, E, F, T, all, uppercase, um, no quotes. All right, so uh, there we go, and we had some other fixes here and there. What else? Stepper. Oh, we've changed the default stepper to an actual type of the stepper type of number. For the longest time, the stepper was set to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was actually a list. It was an array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when you pressed on an up arrow there, it would actually go down. And if you pressed on the down arrow, it would go up because lists do that. The numbers don't. The numbers are reversed. The numbers, if it's actually a number stepper, then you want up to, when you press up, that's uh, going to the next number, higher number. So we were tired of that situation. So we just made the default uh, a number stepper from 0 to 10, I think. Or from, yeah, the max we set to 10. All right, so that's been adjusted as the default stepper. And then the new version of CreateJS, as, as mentioned, and the adding of the Zogs. Uh, good, the site has been updated, so we should probably show you that in this Explorer too. This has kind of been a catch-all, a catch-all Explorer, huh? Or, oh, it's not an Explorer, it's a bubbling. It's been an Explorer bubbling. <laughs> there we go, or a bubbling exploration. Uh, right, so the site. How about we go back to the docs? The site has been updated under code. A couple things. So under code, if you come on down, you get your, well, let's control zero this. This is the normal size for people. Uh, you come on down, you get your couple different templates, and then the more templates. And then here is the CDN. So this is a new little slot um, in the code page. Remember, if you don't want to see it, you can hide any of these, and then you can show them again later. Uh, well, let's hide some. Say we, I want the template, but I don't need this template anymore. I never see it. Actually, I don't care about this one or that one. There's the learn section gone. The tools are gone. The accessibility is gone. Good. Here's my libraries. So if you wanted just these ones, you can keep them that way, and then you can hit show to bring them back all the other ones. Anyway, I want to show you the Zim CDN. Oh, for Christ's sake, my cat has been trying to get in for the last 15 minutes or so. Um, you know, how about a bit, bit of patience? I'm coming! <laughs> there. Uh, so anyway, here's the Zim CDN. So this is kind of neat. Uh, what happened is our server, our server is like, you know, hosted on some server farm. But anyway, they changed their settings so that you no longer showed the the files and folders inside the CDN if there's no index page there. We didn't mind that. We wanted that to happen. But uh, they switched that. And even if we put in a new HD access file saying, please show this directory structure, it, it didn't do it. So there's something overriding it. And we went, OK. So we made a little Perl script that um, shows here what is in the CDN. So here's all, there's Zim 10.8.0. And if you click that, it, it heads to Zim 10.8.0. Uh, along with the various sizes as well, going down through to the earlier versions of Zim. Now here at this point, we ten, at 10.5.0, we started putting the directory in as the as the number. Then before that, we've got Zim 10.4.1. We did it this way without the, the directory structure. So now we do the directory inserted in here. And there's some of the other Zim 10s. Now, Zim 10 and on, we started hosting at zimjs.org. So that's our own CDN powered by Cloud Cloudflare, I guess. We used to be on the Amazon Cloud Front, 
And so any ones that are on Amazon are still on Amazon. We just don't list them here. So any earlier Zims are still around on Amazon. You can get the idea from the updates. If you look at the updates, you'll see the different versions of the updates going way back to, I think, Zim 2 or something like that, or Zim 1 maybe. All right, um, here are the doc files. So 10.8.0 Zim underscore doc. That would be all what, what we create the docs from. So it's all not minified code uh, there. So that's the unminified code of Zim. Then we have the various Zim helper modules. So Zim socket, three, the three helper modules, the pizzazzes, um, games, and where'd the uh, physics go? I think we're missing the physics in there, so we'll have to take a look and see. Oh, there it is, physics 2.0. So there's only been one physics um, that we've put on the on the new uh, Zim org uh, CDN. Then there's create JS ones. Now we're we're just fiddling with this. Um, in the past, create JS has been called create JS underscore min. And then we decided, since we're hosting our sort of own versions, slight versions of CreateJS, most everything will work in, in their version of CreateJS. We've got a few things we've been doing a little bit differently. We'll try and go back to the CreateJS community and sort of say, hey, here, let's do a pull request or something for that one change we made in Zim 1.2.4. But they're uh, quite a bit slower to update their official ones because they're hooked up with Adobe and stuff. So it might take a year before they, they get an update kind of thing. So. Uh, anyway, we've now changed this. So create JS instead of putting the underscore min on. Note for 1.2.4, we've dropped to just create JS there, and then we're matching our docs one with an underscore doc, and that's the create JS that has all the docs in it. All right. So that means when we do our our look, well, let me just finish this. I'll show you our look though afterwards. At the bottom here, we have some helper. Uh, well, not helper libraries. These are outside. So 3JS, Socket.io, um, EasyStar, Box2D, uh, those types of things, the, the libraries that we tend to work with. Okay, I wanted to show you back on the docs here. Uh, what was I showing you? Oh, no, it wasn't on the docs. It was on the code page here. So when you go to code and bring in our CreateJS and Zim, now you can see how, how we've matched this up. So CreateJS is 1.2.4. We've, we've got directories for each. And then just the name of it, CreateJS.js, which is a little bit weird. We don't say, call it ZimJS.js, but I think, whatever, that's CreateJS.js uh, and then ZimJS. So we've sort of made that a bit simpler for people to see. If you recall what that was, it was, you know, there'd be no way that you could remember it, or it was just like a whole bunch of cloud front characters or something like that. So that's, this is a lot less scary. All right, um, another thing aside from the uh, code page that changes there is that we have under the learn section, we'll take a look. Uh, in a similar case, we had an explore. So we've added explore here under the learn section. I'll click that and the explore now points to all of the videos. So these are all videos of, of Zim Explorer, so you can go and click on those videos. But the real reason we did this page is the same deal. There's lots of files in the Explorer directory, and it used to just be open so that you could go to Explorer and then you'd see a big long, big long file list. Well, that was gone and people couldn't do that anymore. And so we had to make the Perl script again, or no, PHP script or something like that read the directories. So here are the directories and you can click on them and then try out that's an alpha mask or you can um, figure out how to erase. So these are little explorations. What does the amoeba do? Oh, neat. It's a little amoeba on some sort of rotating. That's kind of cool, huh? Oh, and it's based on my mouse movements. No kidding. So how does that work? Move mouse to control the speed of the amoeba. Well, anyway, um, etc. So there are more than a hundred, more than two hundred, two hundred and eighty-eight explorations. Um, cool. So no guarantee in what you get there. 
as a matter of fact, it's a shame. We, we, when we lost our directory structure, we stopped putting things in Explore because, uh, you know, people couldn't find them anymore. And we started either putting them in this test directory or just, you know, not making any more. So uh, now that we've got this back again, we'll hopefully continue to add things to the Zim Explorer. And uh, this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. So we took a look through some odds and ends, um, some important things in animation so that we can loop and uh, change, change property values when we, when we loop, as well as um, pausing the animate as we um, lose focus on it or uh, reduce it. And the same with the timeout and the interval as well. And then uh, just a review of a whole bunch of different things. So thanks for listening. If you're still here, that means, hey, you must like Zim. Why don't you come and join us? Zimjs.com slash slack. We do have a contest underway as well. So make a little something. <clears throat> We've got three entries so far. It'd be great to get some more. Uh, we've been so hard, so hard working on getting Zim 10.8.0. That's a lot of changes. We've added since Zim 10.5. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, let's, well, I can't go back. We're, we're now at the bubbling thing. We've added 100K to Zim. So in this last, uh, the last four or five main launches of Zim to, to reach the near the end of Zim 10, 100k. Zim is about 500k, so that's um, that's a fifth. You know, wow, been hard at work still, but I do certainly see it slowing down a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll relax. That's a thing. We thought of going to Zim 11 and calling a Zim Lev. That was you know the plan, and then going to Zim Doz maybe D O Z dozen for Zim 12. But just decided that let's try and keep it at 10. Maybe um, maybe that's where it will. It will top out and become a very mature, general JavaScript Canvas framework. We do have some ideas for some helper libraries. We want to get in motion capture on a webcam, a few other things like that. Uh, so we'll keep growing that way. Um, all the best. Ciao.